Hi, Robert Goldberg here, First Amendment TV, with Joey Rulo from uh, Political Corruption on First Amendment TV. And Joe called me up earlier today that something that had he had seen when he was in Manhattan on an interview for a movie uh, that he found very disturbing. And after he told me what it was about, uh, I happened to agree with it, and it's something that's going on. And let us know exactly what happened and your take on everything from today. Well, as a lot of people are following the last, you know, se several months with uh, what had happened with the VA scandal, uh, with the improper care, as you know, we did a, uh, our, one of our prior shows actually covered the VA scandal in Phoenix, Arizona. Um, like you had said, Robert, I was in uh, New York City, coincidentally, um, had run into a homeless veteran, um, which there's some denial out there that they don't exist, um, and they do. Um, I was on a uh, audition for a major film role that I'll hopefully be getting soon, and on my way back, doing a little bit of sightseeing, and... Um, you know, I'm not going to say the veteran's last name, but I will say, you know, his name is Michael. And, you know, I won't even say the area that I met him in, in fear that, you know, he's going to get picked up, um, you know, the way things work. Um, but well, anyway, the way I things have been for, going lately, the way things have been going lately, well, all the targeting. Yeah, I spoke to him for a good hour, hour and a half. And this is the story. Uh, Michael was a 2008 um, honorable discharge, honorable meaning he had PTSD and he was honorably discharged from the military from Iraq in 2008. Um, Michael's story begins with, you know, horrible PTSD and he started using drugs prior to 2008. Michael wasn't a heroin addict, Michael wasn't a drug addict, and basically wasn't using any kind of drugs at all. And what else should be noted, you know, is that he didn't have any type of legal problems or any type of, um, you know, arrest or um, what have you. Um, he's a, you know, young guy, and he's basically struggling and one of his biggest wishes that he had told me was that, and it's sad, that he wishes that he can have a home and a family. Well, there's some steps that need to be taken. I've worked with other vets before. Um, he's at 50% um, disability because of PTSD, yet he's held 20 jobs in the last year, and he wasn't able to stay at those jobs. He usually, you know, loses the job within a week or two, and that's very prevalent and very common um, denominator with veterans that have PTSD. It is very difficult to hold a job, as with anyone that has any type of, um, you know, mental illness. Um, the other sad part about it is, you know, he's getting less than $1,000 a month. In New York City, you know, you probably couldn't find a place, you know, without putting down a deposit, you know, you're probably looking at probably $50 a day, at least if you go to a hotel, um, that and added to it, he has a drug problem. Um, Michael is completely and totally distrustful with the VA system. Since 2008, they have abandoned him and he's aggravated. He's, I'm going to use the exact words, aggravated, depressed, frustrated, um, but the conversation that I had was with an intelligent hero who wants a family and he wants a home, and there's some steps that need to be taken, obviously. He doesn't trust the VA. Um, you know, he feels manhandled when he goes in, you know, for any type of treatment. Um, there isn't a homeless shelter for veterans period. Um, the mayor, and this is a separate issue, of New York City has just made a statement 
that a press statement that there's going to be, I believe, 50,000 um, undocumented immigrants yep. that are going to be given a ID card, which will give them access to all the things that Michael can't get without having to go through a long, um, horrible, you know, enduring process, like we know what happened in Phoenix, Arizona. So, you know, it is true that undocumented immigrants are getting quicker care than our veterans. And it is true that, you know, a veteran like himself, he can't just go off the streets and go into a hospital because he's covered through the VA. But if the VA is not doing what they need to do, and again, you have somebody who got lost between the cracks, he's abandoned, that's how he feels, and you can't change that. He fought for this country, I believe him. And he feels abandoned. And there's a, there's a, there's a priority for veterans getting out now, which there should be obviously Afghanistan and Iraq because the issues are new. But if you look at some of the delays that are going on, you can understand it. This guy's five years from Iraq. Iraq is very recent. But once you pass a mark, and I believe it's five years, which he's at, he's no longer a priority. And there's different programs that he doesn't have access to anymore, like now, the veterans that are getting out right now. He's uh, lost in between the cracks. I, I just want to interrupt you for a second, uh, because what's kind of funny is they say five years is the cutoff, but for five years he's been trying to probably get help, and he couldn't even get that. And a lot of that depends on what's going yeah. on with the whole thing. The biggest problem, and I think that we discussed this on the prior show, is I worked with veterans to help them get disability when they were at, let's say, 10%, and, how, and to help them try to appeal the process, which is what I'm going to do with Michael, is I've gotten him to go to the VA and to start the process to change from 50% to try to bring it up to 100%, but they lowball you. They try to get you, you know, at 70, 80, and then you have to appeal it again. Well, but they don't want, for reasons B, probably, reasons B, probably, they don't want the statistics to get out there that so many people are at 100% disability in a way. So if they label them 50%, it doesn't look as bad. I think it's even worse than that, Robert. Um, I think that the initial intent of the U.S. government starting in Vietnam and before was, hey, let's give these guys 10% when they get out, lowball them, and by the time the ink dries and they get the first check, they'll realize, I can't sustain this, and they see what the injuries are and how expensive it's going to be, so they figure if we give them a low amount, that by the time they appeal it, they're rolling quarters in the budget so that a veteran who should get it up front immediately is not getting that for five years, ten years. Therefore, the budget has more money in it. And it's a horrible thing, and it's obvious. Um, there's not many people out there that would disagree with me. Um, anyone who's in Congress would see that it's very clear that that's what was going on. Um, there is a lot of unwritten rules, and there's a lot of systematic bureaucracy um, systematic meaning unwritten stuff as well that, hey, listen, give them 10%, let them appeal it, and then there's 600,000 people waiting on an appeals process, and I wouldn't be surprised if they shred half of that stuff like they did the medical records at Phoenix. So, you know, we have Michael, we have other people out there. Um, he, off the top of his head, knew of two other veterans that were within two or three miles of, around him. And that's just in New York City. We know that they're all over the place. Homeless veterans are all over the place. They're in every state, in every city, and we need to focus on that. But what's most important is that we need to prioritize, and we need to see where the system is broken 
and it needs to be fixed. And what's really politically corrupt about this is that they exist. And not only do they exist, but hopefully Michael will come on to the show, you know, in a couple of months. Once he gets settled, he already agreed to do it. But, you know, for now, I just wanted to, you know, do an introductory of the situation. I just hope that anyone out there who is in public office, um, whether it be state or Congress or U.S. Senate, that this is an educational lesson for you here. Um, we have homeless veterans and we need to get them off the streets. And some solutions might be, you know, homeless veteran shelters. Um, you know, they have pride. And anyone who fights in a war wants to keep their pride. And we all know that anyone that is in the service, you know, earns that pride and that, that, that they're heroes. And they should have the ability to, you know, not only be able to have shelter, but they should also have access to a system that isn't broke. And he doesn't have access to a system that isn't broken. One thing, too, is that we play phone tag on a daily basis. I don't have a secretary. Therefore, he calls me from an unknown number half the time because it's from a VA uh, place, which because he's homeless, he doesn't have a phone. He doesn't have an Obama phone. Why, why wouldn't a homeless veteran get a, an Obama phone um, if... You know, other people get it, um, and it as well as it, you know, yeah. So you were going to say, Robert? Um, I, I really lost track because you, what, what you're saying really, I couldn't interrupt it, and because it's very important, but um, in the future, when you see him again or speak to him again, if you want, we can go in there and film it, you know, as a recorded episode and put it out there also to talk to him about a lot of things that he's going through and uh, hopefully, you know, people see that he's a person like us. Uh, this is a person that put everything on his line uh, when he became a veteran and he volunteered to go into the service. Now, that's what's even more disgusting. It, it wasn't a draft uh, like just before I became of the age um, in the 70s when they stopped the draft. That was maybe a year or two away from it age-wise. But he volunteered to do this. He volunteered to put his life on the line, serve and protect his country, and he's being totally dismissed. Uh, and people, if you're mad at what's going on with the VA, repost this video out there, share it with people, uh, because and find other veterans groups and get involved, find out how you can help. Because they need the help. They need our help more than the illegal immigrants coming into this country. Why are illegal immigrants getting more notoriety than the people that were willing to die for the flag that's behind me and for you to be able to do whatever you like? Why are American citizens being put on the back burners and people that are invading this country illegally getting first class treatment? You know, all these politicians that want to help the illegals, yes, it's a great thing. Uh, you want to do the right thing for humanity or whatever, but these politicians don't have their front doors unlocked. They have a lock on their front door. There's a fence going around the White House to keep people out because you want to keep I think a really out. Big, I think a really big thing also is he doesn't believe in the system, which is agreeable, understandable. Yes. And factually conceivable, well, it's factually conceivable based on what has been going on with the systematic flaws and, you know, it, it just doesn't work, the system. And here we have another issue where veterans are homeless and he's addicted to drugs, but they don't have a system where he feels comfortable to be able to go into that system because it's not working. He's and been lied to. There's a lot one. of problems. Yeah, he's, he's been, been lied yeah, to. And he's from also day one. can't hold a job because of PTSD. He has a real live, you know, mental illness that is very serious. And anyone who understands what PTSD can understand that this poor guy, you know, lives on the streets. And, you know, 
what I want to do, like I said, is we're going to do another episode. We're probably going to go to New York City to actually interview him there. Um, but until then, we appreciate that you viewed. My name is Joey Rulo. I look forward to the next episode, you know, hopefully where we'll have the veteran on with us. Um, and if you can share this, that's the only way that we're going to get the word out. Thank you. Uh, I just want to uh, add to that, people, uh, you have to, if you're disgusted and you don't like what's going on with our veterans, you have to be a part of the fight. He put his life on the line to protect you in this country. It's up to us now to fight the fight for him because he can't fight to make sure he gets what's coming to him. So it's, it's this is our war against the injustice that's going on with these veterans. So please join this battle and, and do whatever you can to participate in helping get all veterans the respect and the health care and everything else that they deserve because they were willing to die for you. And that should not be forgotten. Thanks again, uh, Joey. And um, i got to say, this makes me upset, very upset. And I hope it makes a lot of other people it upset to, to really get into this fight and do this. This is really disgusting what's happening to people. It's disappointing, but it's not surprising. And this won't be our last episode on this. You know, like I said, we will, you know, interview him personally. Um, when that time is right. But as of right now, I'm working with him in steps so that, you know, he can get care for his drug problem, um, you know, increase his PTSD disability payment um, for income and, you know, trying to get him on the road so that, you know, he can have a family with a house someday. Right. Like he deserves. Thanks once again. And please, people. Get involved. People, good American people like this gentleman need our help and your help. So get involved and let's do something about it. Don't be silent. Thanks, Robert. Take care.